हेलो फ्रेंड वेलकम टू मडी इंजीनियरिंग हब दिस योर नेटर रवि गुप्ता टुडे वी गोन टॉक अबाउट बालाश वाटर परफॉर्मेंस स्टैंडर्ड बिफोर बिलिंग द वीडियो आई वांट टेल यू दैट आई हैव मेड वीडियो रिगार्डिंग डी1 इन व्हिच इज टॉक अबाउट बालाश वाटर एक्सचेंज स्टैंडर्ड एंड आई विल सजेस्ट to all of you that please watch that video before watching this so that you have a clear idea if you want to know about d2 only then you can watch this video you will get a clear idea about d2 that is palash water performance stand so basically this d2 is talks about the palash water treatment system the treatment system should consist of such parameter that it can deliver certain quality regarding the micro organism so basically the ship conducting palash water management shall discharge less than 10 viable organism per meter cube greater than or equal to 50 micrometer in minimum dimension so this chart will give you a clear idea so basically if we have a balash water treatment system on board and if we are carrying out the balash as per the balash water management plan so the balash which are been delivered or taken in or out from the ship should be searched that it should not contain more than 10 per 10 viable organism per meter cube if its dimension is more greater than or equal to 50 micrometer the thing we need to care is that if the size is greater than 50 or more then it should be consisting of 10 viable per meter cube if the size is 10 to 50 in that case it should be less than 10 viable microorganism per milli liter apart from that size of the viable organism it also talk about certain bacteria or fungus like toxicogenic vibro cholera it should be less than 1 CFU basically is called colony forming unit per 100 ml the th- fourth one is this which should be less than 250 CFU per 100 ml and the fifth one is this which should be less than 100 CFU per 100 ml so basically through this chart i want to show you that how depending upon the size and depending upon the type the bacteria segregation has been carried out so that the invasive microorganism can be minimized basically as you know that imo have found out more species which have become invasive in the safer environment out of which the most ten dangerous problematic species are these cholera toxic alga midden crab asian kelp zebra mussels north paramatic sea star north jelly like all this so basically in order to prevent that the palash water performance standard talks about the palash water treatment system should have this qualities now we come to the question come to our mind okay the d1 talk about the exchange standard the d2 talks about the performance standard so a time will come then we have to shift from d1 to d2 it means that each ship which are complying with d1 have to in the future comply with the d2 means palash water need to install the palash water treatment system on board so how they will do basically vessel need to either comply with regulation d1 or d2 but in 
any case they have to comply the d2 by 224 okay palash water convention regulation b3 provide this information the original regulation b3 was amended by mbpc circular to comply with the compliance date for compliance with the d2 regulation so as you can see this is the chart which show that 8 september 2017 the balash water convention enter into force and 8 september 2024 all the ship need to comply with the balash water management system now the question comes to our mind that okay then how they are going to the first what they have told that all the ship which have been made after 8 september 2017 need to have balash water treatment system means need to have D2 compliance, but the ship which are before constructed, suppose the a ship is there which has been constructed on 8 September 2014, so it will undergo the first renewal survey, which will be around after entering into the force, that is 8 September 2019. After if it is conducting the first renewal survey, in that case the he have to comply with the D2 compliance. it means he have to install the balash water treatment system but if a ship is conducting the renewals first renewal iop renewal if it is conducting in between 8 september 2017 to 8 september 2019 in that case he have to comply with the d2 compliance in second iopp renewal survey after entry into force so this is how this convention talked about the compliance this is very tricky but basically what you need to know that first thing is that it enter into force in 2017 all ship have to comply with this date and third thing is that all the ship which are constructed after this need to comply with d2 compliance but those ship which have been constructed before they have to comply with this if the first iop renewal is falling after 8 september 2009 they have to comply or if it is falling in between then then they have to comply in the second iop renewal so this is how you can break the part in the segment now the d3 d3 talks about approval requirement for the balash water system so balash water management system must be approved by the administration in accordance with the imo guideline what are the guideline that is basically g8 and g9 which will be, which will i will uploading in my upcoming video this include system which make the use of chemical or biocide make a use of organism or biological mechanism or which alter the chemical or physical characteristic of balash water so basically regulation d3 talk about that how a balash water treatment system should be what property it should have and how it should can be made sustainable to the environment now this d3 thing is mainly classified in two part g8 and g9 okay this g8 and g9 i will talk about in my upcoming video the regulation d4 talks about the prototype technology it allow for ship participating in a program approved by the administration to test and evaluate promising balash water treatment technology to have a leeway of 5 year before having to comply with the requirement it means that the ship which is helping to develop or which are installing the prototype which is been in development in the ship they will be given a leeway of 5 year before complying with the requirement so this is how the various regulation d1 d2 d3 and d4 is that i will be explaining d3 more detail through g8 and g9 guidelines in my upcoming video so i hope i have given you a clear idea in this that how the regulation d2 talks about different type of viable or organism and different type of bacterias and how 
we are going to fight with this so if you have any doubt please do comment below i will reply back and if you like the video then please hit the like button and please subscribe and please share with your friend in your social platform in your whatsapp platform whatever it will be but please share because i want that more and more people should know about this channel so that we can all come to this platform so that we can grow and learn together please friend help me to achieve our company aim thank you friend have a good day